All right, so today we're gonna to talk about simple CTO techniques. And I'll make it very simple. I don't wanna go into the details. If you want to go into details, there's several books written, but this is kind of what I do. So every CTO, whenever you are planning to do it, ideally should have contralateral access, okay? So you need to have shots showing the distal end of the distal or distal cap. Secondly, I'm saying every, but of course, sometimes um, you can do it without every case. But in the beginning, I would suggest you having a dual access for the contralateral shots, which means if you are working on the right coronary artery CTO, you need to have a left coronary artery catheterization uh, catheter in place. It could be through the radial access, through the femoral access, however you want to do, but it's important to have the pathway defined. Secondly, very important is to evaluate the angiogram, and I will probably make a new another video, how do you evaluate a CTO prior to intervening on it. So you wanna take some shots, especially mag out shots where the whole heart is visible, where both systems, the right and the left systems are getting filled up, and you need to evaluate at least five to 10 minutes, okay? Take your time to evaluate that. Uh, some people like to draw the images, so you can draw the images, like this is right coronary artery, this is the left coronary artery, so this is circumflex, and then actually make the collaterals. Where are they coming from? What is their direction? Are they high frequency or low frequency? So the only septal collaterals that connect are between the PDA and the RCA, okay? So just to be clear, PDA and RCA. And the rest of the collaterals are mainly epicardial collaterals, which means they are high-risk collaterals. And in the beginning, I would suggest not to use them because they are high-risk. So the RPL, right postural lateral, coming from the circumflex is going to be epicardial collateral. The tip of the LED is going to be epicardial collateral. Uh, anything coming out of circumflex, going to diags, going to um, circumflex connection between these two vessels is going to be epicardial. Any proximal collaterals um, of the RCA with the circumflex or LED are also going to be epicardial collateral. So you need to assess and evaluate the collaterals. Contralateral injection, evaluate the collaterals. Then you come to the guide support. So in every case I have morphed uh, in the past, I have a very supportive guide. So on the case, in the case of right coronary artery, it's usually 0.8, sorry, 0.75 AL, AL1. On very rare cases, AL2, I have used AL2 as well but you wanna have very supportive guide, okay? Uh, on the, you don't use GR4 or uh, less supportive guides. On the left, EBU, at least, you know, 375, 40, something in that range. You need to use that. Now, this is a general suggestion. You can have uh, ALs also work here. Uh, I have a special guide that I use. It's called JCL RAD guide. Uh, Pretty supportive guide. And on top of that, you need a guide extension. So if you're using eight French system, use eight French guide extension. If you're using seven French system, use seven French guide system. I frequently use seven French guide system uh, with a seven French guide ex extension. Uh, preferably, uh, I use telescope, which is Medtronic or Guidezilla. I try not to use guide liner because I have had higher risk of, you know, dissection is much stiffer. However, it is the largest lumen. So there are pros and cons of uh, each of those. And then microcatheter, I think is also a must, okay? You need to have a microcatheter. 
Now, if there is a side branch at the site of the proximal cap, so the vessel is going like this, and there's a side branch where the occlusion is, I like to use a dual lumen catheter. So Suzuki or twin pass uh, port on any of the catheter, is, uh, catheter can be used. And we can talk about later, like how can you actually, in, uh, you can take the vessel and, and actually advance the wire into the proximal cap, but you wanna have a dual lumen microcatheter. So if the wire goes in here, you can use the other port to direct the wire into the dual lumen, uh, into the true lumen or into the main branch. If there's no side branch, then yes, you can use any supportive microcatheter, which ranges from Corsair uh, Pro XS or Turnpike LP. These are my favorites, Corsair Pro XS or Turnpike LP. LP. Rarely I have to use more stiffer versions of this like Turnpike Gold or Corsair uh, as such, but these are my go-to microcatheters. Once I'm there, so I use a workhorse wire to get there, it could be, you know, BMW, run through, uh, you know, the other fighter, any other wire that you want to use. And then the first wire I utilize is Feeder XT. What's the benefit of Feeder XT? It is 0 0.009 at the tip. So it's like a javelin, you know, it, it, can, in, it can penetrate very small, thin, micro channels in the inside of the uh, inside of the plaque. Then if that doesn't go, then I have the decision to make, should I go with Mongo or Gaia? So Gaia are a little stiffer wires and I've become more and more uh, fan of Gaia third and Gaia next now. However, if I cannot see, so like it's a long segment CTO, and I cannot define the path, I try to go with Mongo, Largus Mongo wire or Pilot, because it usually stays in the lumen. And if it, even if it doesn't find the true lumen, it will go into a dissection plane. With the, with the Gaia, unless you have a really good feel of that, you may actually get out of the lumen and maybe in the pericardium. So you need to be very careful for, with it because it usually goes straight, almost straight. So if I can, I can see where the lumen is, where the, like if there's a lot of calcium, you can see the whole vessel, then I try to use Gaia's, okay? So if I can see where the vessel is. So remember this, Gaia is when you don't know, uh, sorry, you know where the vessel is and pilots and gladius when you don't know where the vessel is. And then all of these don't work, then I go to Confenza Pro or Hornet 14, but these are mainly just to use the puncture, the proximal cap. I don't take it further, okay? Just the proximal cap, puncture it. It may go into subintimal area or it may go into the true lumen, you know. I can tell you my chances of getting into true lumen with any of these has been uh, close to 10, 15%, it's very low. So once you are using this wire, you're usually ending up in the subintimal place. Let's say you're not able to do any of these. Uh, my go-to has moved from Fielder XT use to Carlino. Okay, what I what is Carlino? Carlino is basically you put a microcatheter right at the tip of the proximal cap and inject 0.5 to 1 ml of dye at a slow speed. And then you flush that dye through, so saline injection can uh, followed by that. It helps in softening the proximal cap. So the proximal cap can get softened. And then you can try these wires again, okay? You can also use laser and just keep the laser there for a few uh, seconds two or three runs, and it may soften the cap as well. And then you can insert the wire afterwards. Rarely I've used that. If the plan is now going to go for the anti-grade dissection re-entry, then we go with this. 
Many times what happens is the Carlino, when you do at the proximal cap, you can actually try to get the, car, the, the microcatheter inside the plaque and try to inject it. It will initiate the dissection plane for you. So you don't need the base or side base. And what is base and side base? Base is balloon assisted side uh, subinterval entry. Side base is when you have a balloon in the side branch, kind of an anchor balloon, and you try to enter into the main branch with the wire so that it doesn't, if the wire keeps on falling into the side branch, that's when you use the side base. Basically, it's a side branch uh, uh, balloon in the side branch, and then you're trying to enter into the main branch with, a, with much more power uh, using that anchor balloon. Base is when you have the balloon, uh, right? So you have, uh, so this is the lesion, okay? And this is the, sorry, the wire I made it longer. So let me, so you have the wire that is going just proximal to it and it keeps on hitting it. You balloon here with a little bit larger balloon than the vessel. So like, uh, you know, if a vessel is like 2.5, you want to put a 2.75 balloon. That will create a dissection. And then you in, get the wire in through this dissection. Usually uh, the pilot or the fielders are great for this because they're hydrophilic. And once you go that, basically you're going around this proximal gap. And then you try to re-enter. Now re-entry is a totally different field. We yeah. can talk about how to re-enter. But lately, I've not been doing base. I've actually moved to Carlino base, kind of Carlino assisted subinterval entry. So I, I inject inside the plaque, and then you have the area where you can enter in through the plaque and then re enter afterwards. So this is kind of, a, you can consider it an algorithm or a basic uh, learning of the CTO. There are many more things you can do here. The, the support can be increased by anchor balloon as well, where if you're thinking about anchor balloon, then you'll just go directly to the base if nothing penetrates. Thank you very much. If you have other questions or other uh, ideas about what you want to learn, please let me know in the chat. Thank you so much.